Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, in this video you'll get to see me turn this juniper bowl. It's uh, 9 by 5 inches, uh, which is 230 by 120 millimeters. Uh, it's got three little feet. It was turned out of green uh, wood, uh, green juniper. So uh, if it walks very much, it doesn't matter because uh, it won't rock around. It's got three feet. Uh, I had quite a bit of trouble getting it aligned between centers as I wanted. Um, so you'll see some of that, not all of it, because it took me quite a bit of fiddling around to, uh, uh, to get it mounted, but you'll see the crucial bits. Um, another, after that, everything went pretty smoothly. Now, initially, I'm going to be mounting this on a uh, two spur drive. This is a faceplate with a uh, couple of nuts through, a uh, couple of bolts through um, with the nuts. And so I need to pick an axis on which uh, this blank will then pivot. Eyeball center, which was there. I left a mark there so I can eyeball that there. That's pretty much on the main line. Whack that in just to mark where the bolt holes are. And then I drill into there. So the, the two spurs will basically fit into the holes and then all I have to do is bring up the tail center. <laughs> Ooh, that's way off where I thought it would be. So first thing is I just need to get it swinging free. Just going to be dropping, dropping that down more to there and it doesn't want to do that. So I have this as a little initial problem. I can't put it on a screw because that's going to get in the way. And that's probably going to come off anyway because it's too thin. Um, just try and get it on again. Uh, if I put a faceplate on it, it's, it's going to be way off at an angle. Um, so I do have a bit of a problem on this size lathe bigger lathe wouldn't have any problem. Right, that bottom bit down here is just catching. Right, that spins. Tighten everything up and the first thing is to try and get it vaguely round. You definitely go back to zero before you start here, start very slow. Well, that's taken quite a bit of messing around and you didn't see all of it, I suspect. I'll probably cut most of that out. Right. Lolloping around. That's actually quite nicely balanced. Uh, I'm able to run it at Five, five thirty. Right, half inch spindle gouge as yeah, usual. Face work for roughing down on the profile. Just try and take the tool on a steady course through space. Regardless of what is or isn't there, there's an awful lot of space. And I should see if you can see all this. So at the moment, this looks like it's going to be pale in the top and the bottom. getting quite wet here. Now there are always 
questions as to why I'm not using a bowl guard, so I will use a bowl guard. had with some words when I, my hand is in that position the flute can jam up with shavings with some woods and I used to spend a lot of time trying to get the shavings out of the flute as I found that doesn't happen with a shallow guard. And the other thing is that the spindle guard is a lot less expensive so there's no need to use very expensive steel when you're working close to the rest so I won't back to the half inch half inch spindle gouge This is a gir tool with a fairly short handle, so I've just got that stuck into my side. Try to move with the tool. on the high the high rim and it doesn't look as I'm going to lose as much as that as I thought I was going to which is nice now the whole thing actually needs to shift that way a bit just take that down first and go a bit faster too Oops. they start rattling turn the speed down a fraction Now running at uh, 700, 698. Right, so I've got a a high wing now and I really don't want that so I'm gonna uh, I want the two high sides on the same plane so the whole thing can go slightly that way at this stage I should have put a foot on the bowl it would have saved an awful lot of messing around later so the problem really was that I couldn't pivot the bowl far enough around on the drive I had here so I've flattened this area off a bit I've still got my two holes and I also made a hole around the back took basically took the bark off where the um, spur drive, uh, where the tail center is going in so we get this back on its spikes right that's not too bad what is showing up now is figure, fiddle back, uh, quite a bit of it all the way around here, so it should look really nice, this bowl. Next thing is to uh, get a foot on it so I can grab it and turn it around. I'm able to run this now at, uh, at 890. 890. <laughs> We've got the tool at about 45 degrees, flute coming this way using the left wing. 
So that can all come down a fraction and I'll be able to grab this um, with a chuck. I can probably grab that with a chuck now if I get a foot on it. I've got going to have two choices. One is to rough it out and uh, turn it off when it's dried off a bit, which will probably three or four months. Um, or I can turn it now and uh, put it on a little tripod foot, which is, uh, yeah, that's looking like a distinct possibility. So uh, I'll just get this lump off. tailstock in a bit tighter so I can take some of this central lump away. I'm always chisel it away otherwise. There's not much holding that so that'll get oh just break away like that. That's good. Right so that now goes into a chuck. What I'm saying is the foot is close to being too small. Yes it is. I'm just hoping my step jaws go out that far. No, by the look of it. No. Right, so I have a wee problem here in that, uh, that this foot needs to be a bit smaller to go into that chuck. So this is real adventures in bowl turning. Right, what's going to happen this time? It's going to get a larger foot, not a smaller one. hole in the center and then I can readjust the whole bowl over the chuck.
damage. First comes down a fraction. Yes, I'm going to need a, an opening at least that. So if I go straight in there, I should be okay. Not using all of the edge at once, just about a about three, four millimeters. enough depth in there so that I can shift the whole piece around on the chuck. And I think Right, that goes over there. Now I can start to think about the outside shape and how I want it to look. And I want these two points in about the same position. This is, I put it on the lathe. That needs to go that way a little bit and it needs to go that way. have the key and the gap. I to check that. And the most important thing really is the rim, so I'll actually start up there. in from the rim in case it splinters away which it wants to anyway uh, right so that's I must have just caught the end of the grain as I was coming in and there's a whole length just splintered off very irritating right so the whole thing the whole thing is coming down about an inch from there in which case if I know that's happening and bring that out. I felt sure this rim was coming off in the first place, so now it's just doing as expected. Problem there with that splinter coming off, so I had the tool pointed up just a bit too much. 
I need to come in a bit more from the side, uh, a bit more horizontally, so I'm going to use the bowl gouge, the right wing. A little finger comes up because I'm getting sprayed with the moisture coming out. Still a, uh, a lump taken out there. That's going to be very thin. Very thin. Yes, I'm really going to lose lose that so the whole thing can come further that way. Gouge which came to hand, spindle gouge for getting a foot to so get into a corner with that. Shear cut back to centre. And I can see that's going to be in the smaller jaws. But at this stage you can take it off and uh, have a look at it. So, this bowl, if I put a ruler on it, uh, this wing is higher than, or well, this size higher than that, and I'd really like to have those two in the same plane uh, so they're an equal distance above the surface the bowl sitting on. Uh, on this side, the, they're both pretty much the same. This is thin, weak, and I've just realized that, in fact, where there's white up here, which looks like wood, that's th the bark really comes down to this greenish line here. And so if the barks are going to come off, which I think it probably will eventually, um, I need to think in terms of that being the rim. Oh, in fact, all the way around here. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens there in the end. Um, so, I will keep these, those two as they are for the moment. And then I want to bring, um, yeah, I want to bring this bit up a fraction. So back remounted. This is beginning to look pretty good. This is uh, these all are okay as, a, as an alignment. Um, I need to flatten this off yet again. I've got some dividers set for the uh, this is the maximum diameter for the step jaws. So the first thing is ready to get a foot on it so I can grip it. It's going to sit on three little feet 
in the end. So uh, I would like to, to have had the foot just slightly wider, I think, but it'll be uh, it'll probably be okay. In, fact, in case anything goes amiss, uh, just pays to turn it round again and just get the inside hole uh, concentric with the foot. Yeah, got that wrong. That could have been another half inch wider. Bowl gouge this time. Heavier, stronger tool. This will be going on to the jaws that I have there, which are the uh, step jaws. This is a shade light for this job. This is a three quarter inch by quarter inch thick square and scraper. The three eighths would be better working at this step. Three eighths thick. Now. If those jaws weren't long enough, I did have some longer ones, same size, so always handy to have all these different chucks. Right, so now we, uh, we, I, finish the outside. This is going to end up with three feet, so I don't need to worry about chuck marks. It's the first thing. to get the overall shape. So out here that feels appalling as a surface. It's all going to be sanded again anyway uh, or it'll be power sanded in the end. Uh, it would be nice to have it a bit better than that. So half inch spindle gauge. That's where the grain's all over the place. I can hear the knocking. Uh, it's still not cut cleanly, but I'm not really too worried by that. Um, what I will mark is center, where the little white dot is, and somewhere for my feet, which will be uh, around there. Now, next shape is to just shape up the outside. And there's a bit of a something double image up there. Not quite sure what that comes from. Yeah, the whole thing seems to have moved very slightly, so I will come in from the top first. And that is so if I'm cutting that way the that'll take the grain uh, the um, take the bark off the rim if I come in this way it's got more chance of staying on and I will do that with a 3 8 deep fluted ball guard it's a 3 8 flute
Right, so I did the original shaping, uh, that was about half an hour ago. Uh, um, the whole thing does seem to retain shape a little bit and it's still very wet, very wet. Try shear scraping that. Okay, it's going as gently as possible. We don't want any pressure against the wood if we can avoid it. Or as little pressure as possible, as you say. Again, up on the rim, uh, this is eccentric, so I won't be hand sanding it, that'll be powered sanded, power sanded because, um, with the lathe off. Because if I hand sand it, the leading wing as it comes round will just be uh, cut faster than the trailing bit, so it just won't look very good. Uh, asymmetric grind. I've got a steeper, much steeper right wing, which means I can get in nice and tight to the foot. shape here. Yeah. A bit more asymmetry so it's long from the bottom and then tightened slightly towards the top. Big gouge is slightly sharper, so I'll use that. I've dropped the rest so that the right wing is cutting just on about center. It can come up center height. going to blend the two surfaces with uh, shear scraping. a huge lump which I'm watching up on the top horizon. I'm not quite sure what that is. Yeah, the wood's just all moving very slightly. So I need to make sure that foot is it's very slightly out of whack, so the three at spindle guard just true that up. Didn't take much. And 
do a bit of sanding on that. It should be done with power, so I'll start off with 180 grit. bark has torn out a little bit and sand this sand the wing the uh, bits which sit up by taking the wood past the sander rather than uh, by hand quite an unusual color variation there I'm not quite sure what it is whether it's damp or what that all that's good enough for the moment for that because that gives me somewhere where my hand can rub uh, to support the bowl when I turn it round. Now this stage I've got to decide whether it's going to be thick or thin and uh, it's not really quite the right shape I think for a very thick rim so we're going for thin and first thing is to get some get a depth hole drilled So it's a little starting hole for the drill. And I need to get the rest across at right angles and uh, measure the depth I want to go from the rest. Oh, that's everything right up to here. So, half inch ball gauge. It's a half inch flute. Get down to the bottom of the hole so I know where all other cuts are going. going to look uh, even, even thickness. Just a shade low on the rest. Exact rest height really depends uh, in part on your height in relation to the to the center height of the lathe and uh, the tool you're using. down below the rim. That's the lowest point in there. Uh, 
Now my real problem here is that that bit of bark is going almost straight down so uh, I'll have to hand sand that little bit um, at some stage I think. Feels fatter there. Let's go back to here with the bevel rubbing, ease the tool run till I get the cut. And measure. So you don't have a huge amount of time to mess around when something's a screen and seems to be on the move. About three sixteenths of an inch, six mil, thin enough. And now up to 1200. little catch was catching the steeper wing on the shoulder in there. Right. The rest will be done with a scraper. big heavy tool this one it's uh, 40 38 mil uh, wide and it's good 3 eighths of an inch thick uh, a good tool and it's a nice heavy tool now this doesn't oh, that's a little bit round there down to that thickness near the base and actually in the base it is that that's about right and take out a little bit in there but no, broadly that's going to be fine I need to take a little bit out from the bottom so that curve into the base feels better. Let's give that just a 
almost like a bit of a lump, which is, it is a bit of a lump. I don't want any hint of this rocking in the middle, which it doesn't. I want to see a nice curve underneath from the shadow. Yep. That's all right. Right, let now get sanded. So start with the rim. There's the hint up here of where I started the second cut and uh, <coughs> it's fairly risky now to come back in uh, with a gouge uh, and the whole thing I think has moved very slightly anyway so uh, 120 grit's going to get rid of that. Uh, the knot which was there has broken out um, I can cope with a hole in that kind of position. Uh, a little bit lower down, uh, wouldn't be so happy. Uh, it's pretty well done. Um, this is going to take a few minutes, so I won't show all of it, but we be getting at it with the power. This is where Americans with a 45 degree drill might, uh, might be better off than I am with this one, but uh, the right angle. sharp edge up there is going to really look better for that. Just sand this slightly now. Yep. Happier with that. So that is finished to 240 grit. There's a little pale line there which looks as though it might be a turning related mark but it's repeated on the outside so it'll be in the wood. So the next thing is to get the three feet dealt with. So, two ways of doing this. I have my little template and uh, and I can kind of uh, mark where I want underneath there. Um, if you don't have one of those, then you can do it with your, drag out your school geometry. You take the radius to there. Now, I want to have the, which way is the grain running? Well, grain's running all over the place. Uh, so I will have that grain drawing broadly, I think, that way. So that will be my number one. Except that that grain's very torn and all over the place. So I might just come around to there. And the radius will, you can step this out six times, roughly around the circumference. One. And two, and then from there to there won't be too far out. So those are my main structural lines. And I just need to sand away 
uh, the bits in between. And I do that with uh, an angle grinder with uh, a flat wheel on it. Now move down to the, uh, the slower angle drill. Going off at the 120. Just need to get my foot on the side I'll be better off with a, uh, a bag or something, some more cushion, put that over that. And then I can go over the whole lot with the sanding pad. I'm going to get at the rim with um, sanding pad. Here we are, oiled with our board linted oil, nice figure there. Now, how even did I get the sides? Could have been worse, probably about a quarter of an inch in it. Um, the other side, definitely higher than that, but uh, I think I can live with that inside. 